This is Chopsticks, my two-headed turtle. And as you can see, it's in perfect health. But the two two-headed turtles that I recently purchased, you can see this white around their mouth right there. That's actually overgrow beef. Basically, that can inhibit them from eating the way that they really want to eat. Now, the reason that that happens is typically either bad nutrition or not enough hard stuff for them to eat. You got to make sure that they're really grinding down that beak. So when they get to this point, you really have to take care of them. So we have no choice but to try to grind that beak down to make sure that they're healthy. Now, you should really take them to a vet if you ever have this problem because they'll sometimes either anesthetize them. But we've been doing this for long enough that we're okay. You just have to be really careful. What you do is you just kind of keep their head in one spot. And it's a little bit harder with two heads because I have to obviously be aware of the fact that there's another head I don't want to drummel either, right? And I just basically want to just really gently just sand down that beak. And that's that. It's one beak good, now I just have three more to go. And angry. this one wants to bite me now. The angry boy. He's mad at me now. I understand, buddy. I understand, don't bite me. Ooh, ooh. Come on, buddy. Okay, I got the second one. So that's two heads down, one turtle down, one to go. Now another good trick is to actually put a cuddle bone that is for birds in with them. And they've been nibbling on this a little bit and their beaks have been kind of coming down a little bit. We just want to take that little bit of edge off. That and the harder food and the variety of food that we're giving them should be really good. But if I can trim them down now, we'll never have a problem again. It says you gotta get your face wet before you apply the match. Done. Uh, that's how you're supposed to do it, Mike. You just had to dry it. Foot skin on my face. What'd you say? I, said I hate nail plots. This is gross. It's a little gross. Wait, how did you open it so quick? You gotta do the droppy drop technique. How about droppy drop? I don't want to drop it. Can someone get my hair? <laughs> <laughs> Why do I get the stupid cat? Putting her feet in the fish. Shut up for one second, please. That's like... the nicest anybody's ever told me to shut up. I feel like I'm uh, one of those guys in the Purge movie. Oh, it tastes bad. You're not supposed to eat it. It's just in my mouth. <laughs> <The> most <laughs> While the boys are taking care of their beauty products, I'm actually gonna go collect some snake clutches. I have a house snake clutch, which is really cool. I love these little house snakes. This egg looks a little bit desiccated. They're dented in, basically, so we'll have to take a look. But look at how beautiful this girl is right here. Oh my gosh, whoa! Good job, Mom, I'll get you back in here. Get her some food, get her all going. We'll check out these eggs real Again, quick. Again, looks like all the eggs are a little bit dented. But we can pop them up just with putting a little bit of moisture in them. Looks like we got two, four, six good eggs. Burning keratin. And that should be good enough to get these guys going again with the cuddle bone, the variety of food. These guys should be wore down 100% in no time. This will definitely help out. And this little monkey right here is not happy with me. I was excited about this female here. This is actually a Tessera corn snake that is het for scaleless. And last year she proved some really beautiful Tessera scaleless. Looks like we got a little slugger there. We got two, four, six, eight, nine beautiful eggs. Here's a het snow corn, which basically just het andre and het albino. And it's actually bred to a scaleless snow corn snake. Two, four, Six, eight wonderful eggs. It looks so scary. It was such a scary. Yeah, in the mask. No close ups to the feet. Oh, it smells like bubbles. Oh, like bubbles. <laughs> That's how you see that. <laughs> Where's the files? This is so gross. It's so relaxing. Oh, I think it's dripping into my eye. Oh, no. It tickles so bad. <laughs> Ooh, it's between my pinky toe. <laughs> Golly. What you doing? Uh, we're back. Hi. I don't know, Brian. Mr. Brian? Oh, oh, sorry. My bad. Yeah, I think he's pooping. So maintenance on all our animals are important, even nail clips. Toothless here is going to get a little manager today, and so are a couple of our other animals. Now, the important thing to understand is that you know, these guys are mainly ground dwellers. You know, they climb a little bit, but not too much. So you can actually clip them. Now, a tree monitor, we don't want to clip their nails because we want them to allow to be able to climb. Knowing your animals and just taking that edge off, right? Because trust me, these guys are little daggers. So trimming lizard nails is just like trimming a dog's nail. You want to make sure that you're cutting the very tip off. Hey, buddy, what's going on? But you don't want to go too deep because they do have what's called a quick, which is that little vein. If you go too deep, you're going to have blood. But you can get that quick stop blood stuff that you use for dogs. Well, so make sure someone's helping you out. And just taking that edge off just takes those little daggers off the claws. Holding him now is so much better. Those little daggers, they really dig in. Love. Whoa. Mama, mama, what is going on, girl? Doesn't look like she's happy at all. What are you doing? This is a leucistic Texas rat snake around a bunch of eggs. Oh, my goodness. She is mad. Okay, got to get mama back in her enclosure. Oh, my God. She is feisty. And then let's take a look and see what kind of egg she has. This is actually leucistic to leucistic. So all the babies are going to be leucistic. We do have a couple sluggers in here. Oh my gosh, look at there's a whole bunch more right here. Oh yeah. Oh. Beautiful right here. Two, four, six, eight. Ten eggs from an angry mama. I feel the mass is sliding down. <laughs> take me out to dinner first. Go. <laughs> 
Yeah. I don't like it. What's up, man? I'll let my beard get in the way. Just covers it up, you know. Oh my god, they're in between my toes so bad right now. Oh! What do you got in between them suckers, dude? You don't want to know. Can you just help me hold them if you don't mind. Wait, we're forgetting something. What? Face shields. Yeah, right. Because you remember what happened to Mike with Elvis. Of course, Elvis is a lot stronger than the other monitors, and he's definitely got a lot tougher claws. There's no doubt about that. But I just want to, again, take that top off. Ugh, it's a lot harder, but I tell you what, it's going to be much easier to handle him once his daggers are gone. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, why didn't we do this before we went to Benchmark? We should or, have. Better yet, we should make them do it. They got a grooming salon. Out, man. Elvis, he's got too many legs. Okay. Flip and flip. Ow! LV, sit still. Please don't move. Ow! I think this was a nail that got you, Mike. Bye! I don't think that worked. Ow! Thanks, Mike. Sorry. <laughs> He's got too many legs. Did you get it? One more. <sighs> Woo! Okay, uh, I'm gonna fix my hair up and move on to the next. No blood. <laughs> this thing's literally in my mouth, just I, dripping. I told you, it's going for your eye, too. Dude, how did you open these? I don't even like nail files. Putting your fingers on the concrete, and then you hit your nail. Ugh. I think this every morning. Don't put on my thigh. Touch me. Just give me your hand. Take this one, dude. Wait a minute. Yeah, just sit still. Isn't that so relaxing, Mike? Oh, I don't like that at all. <laughs> Not at all. My feet tickle. My face is sliding down my face. <laughs> Rubbing my nails. Not just snake eggs today. Let's check in with Jessica. It sounds like she found a cool clutch of geckos. I got my first African fat tail geckos of the eggs. Or of the eggs <laughs> of the year. So we're going to check them out. I'm really excited because we've got an Oreo female, and she probably has some pets that we don't know about. Both of these guys were donated to us, so I'm not 100% sure about their genetics, but it'll be fun to breed them. This is the male here. He's just a straight. Go ahead and there we go. Nice. I'm gonna go ahead and set these guys up. I'll probably put a little moss on them. It looks like they're a little desiccated. How long did they take the hatch? A little bit longer than a le uh, leopard gecko, so maybe like 70 to 80 days. Remember when Frosty first came in, he had a really bad nose rub and a couple of other little marks on his head and oh, and he liked to poop. There you go. Thanks, Frosty. I appreciate you. Get your tail out of there, but oh, oh, oh that's on good. me. Great. I'll go get some paper towel. I think he's gonna need a bath too. So we're not gonna clip his nail shade because we don't want to stress him out, but we're really seeing that you can barely see the rub on his nose now. And all those other little marks on him look really healed up. He's in a little bit of a shed right now. We're gonna continue to soak him. Once he comes out of this next shed, he's gonna be pure white, absolutely stunning. When you identify an injury or something like that, as long as you're treating it, typically it heals really quick. Reptiles are super quick healers. So Frosty is looking absolutely amazing. Love you, boy. Oh. Goodness, I stink and I smell better than that. Oh God, it's so warm. Look at Ben and Jerry. They're actually starting to shed right now. And the interesting thing about it, of course, is when they shed, they have that little Y, so they can't roll out. They have to break that shed. Now, of course, he had that injury right here. You can see it on this side. Once it sheds out, it's gonna probably look a little bit raw because it's gonna rip that layer of skin off. So we're gonna have to put some more medicine on but it. It's definitely healing really well. And this shed is gonna be Really help it get on. Again, we always keep track of all the animals that have little issues so that we can make sure we're staying on top of it so that they heal perfectly. What in the heck are you guys doing? Spa day. Since when is it a spa day? It's how about work day? We found it in Lori's office. Oh, Lori's gonna love this. You got duck liver, you gotta put it on your mustache and just skew it here. <laughs> yeah, there look, you go. Look, look that. Look that. Look, look this. Golden. Skew it right up. Relaxing. Sure. Two for sure reduction. Ow! Ow! <laughs> Take a look and see what we got here. We have a children's python wrapped around a beautiful clutch eggs. And I always love this. Look at this. You can literally pick this up like this and look at this. How awesome is that? So let's see how many eggs she has. It's so interesting when they do this. I want to get over the egg box because they're not actually together 100% and they will fall off. So I'm going to just slowly take her eggs away from her. Mom won't be totally happy, but it'll be okay. She'll forget about these within a day or two and be back on the food, which is way better for her and way better for the egg. We've got two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven 10, 11 beautiful eggs. Of course, Drogo is one those situations where you have to really keep an eye on him as far as his weight, the amount of food he's eating and stuff like that because we do our health checks on our animals all the time. As a matter of fact, if you didn't see, we did a cage by cage health check. I'm gonna put a card up here. You guys can go back and watch that video. With they actually don't show stress. They don't show any kind of sickness. So you have to really keep an eye on them to make sure that they're super healthy. But Drogo's doing great. He eats good, he's gaining weight. He looks absolutely amazing. Buddy, I love you so much. One of the issues that you have with tortoises really see with these two is what they call pyramiding. Now Franklin over here has lots of 
of pyramiding like this, Steve isn't too terribly bad. Now, when I got these animals, they actually were 20 something years old and they already had all this pyramiding. Now, pyramiding is caused, depending on the type of tortoise, with too much protein, for instance, or lack of humidity. So right? you want to let them absorb a lot of water to help that shell stay really nice and as smooth. As well as an animal like leopard tortoise or a delbert tortoise, they don't need protein. So you don't want to add protein to their diet or you'll end up getting pyramiding in shells. Basically, they grow too fast with that protein and that's what causes the pyramiding. Now, where red foot tortoises need a little bit more protein, so you just have to know your species of tortoise. But once they have the pyramiding like this, it really doesn't necessarily affect them as far as their health, but you can never really reverse the cause of pyramiding. So Franklin will always be pyramided. Steve actually looks pretty decent. Did you just fart? Yeah, you gotta look at his thing and go, oh, and then fart at the same time. So it's great to get all the checkups on all the animals and get all our maintenance done. Everything is looking good and checking out great. As a matter of fact, speaking of checking out, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, there's a playlist that you can watch all kinds of videos. You can also hit that subscription button. It would mean a lot to me. Also, hit that like button while you're down there. Have a wonderful day, Reptile Army. Remember, be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you in the next one. It wasn't me. My back cracked. Did you have lasagna last night? Dude, how'd you know?